Today we're going to be looking at absolute value graphs. Now there's lots of ways to do this. The best way is possibly by using translations. But today I'm just going to be teaching the basics because I also want to go over domain and range and how that applies to functions. Okay, so we're going to be graphing the function absolute value of x minus 2. Now if you think back a little while, we talked about the fact that f of x, the function of x, is the same thing as just having y. And so we're just going to rewrite this as being y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. All right. Now secondly, we don't have a shortcut yet for graphing these. And so with any function, you can always graph it just by making a table, plugging in values, and working it out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a table. We're going to put in some x values. We're going to put in some y values. Now we don't really know what this is going to look like yet. So let's just go ahead. We're going to put in a couple of values. We'll go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, and we'll plug these in and see what we get. So let's put negative 3 in. So y equals negative 3 minus 2. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Do the same thing for each of these. Okay, so that will be negative 4. Absolute value is 4. Now don't get caught up into the fact that you think that there's a pattern because be very careful. Just watch. When I do negative 1 minus 2, I get negative 3. So that's 3. You say, well, Mr. Bauer, did the pattern still there? Okay, well, yeah, it's still there. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value is 2. Now when we get a little bit farther, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Uh, 2 minus 2, so that'll be 0. Watch what happens now when I do 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. So it doesn't follow the same pattern the, that a linear graph did. Okay, It's partially linear. In fact, it's linear in two different pieces. Okay, So since it started to go up, let's see what happens when I put 4 in. So y equals the absolute value of 4 minus 2. So that would be 2. Let's put 5 in. And so you'll probably recognize the pattern now. 5 minus 2 is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. And so let's go ahead and put these points down. We've got 3, negative 3, 5. We've got negative 2, 4. We've got negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 0. And then it goes to 3, 1, 4, 2 and 5, 3. So I'm just plotting the points that were there. You see I now have something that's completely different from what we've done before. And not only is it a straight line on this half, it's straight on the other half as well, but it's not the same as this one. In fact, the slope is going to be the opposite. Okay, so now a couple of things. We've got the idea. We know what the graph looks like. The reason why it does this is because a linear graph would keep going. But we know that the absolute value can't be negative. So it can't keep going, so it makes it positive instead. Anything that would have been negative is now going to be positive. Okay, um, so what we'll do next is we'll look at the domain and the range. Now hopefully you remember that domain are the x values. Okay, now before we just kind of listed the x values. But you'll notice here that the line is covering lots and lots of x values. Not just the ones that we plugged in, but it's covering the ones in between, and the ones in between those, and the ones in between those. There are an infinite number of x values. And so when we write domain, we want to write down what are the x values that work in this function. Well, can you think of anything that you cannot put in for x? Probably not, and that's because you can put any number in for x and it will work. And so we describe that by saying all real numbers. Okay, you don't have to write it out. Real numbers. Okay, now let's look at the range. The range is the y values. And you'll notice that the y values, there's positive y values up here. But then when I get to here, they don't go negative. And so that means that the y values can't be negative. And so therefore, the y values have to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, You don't have any y values down here. 